So you guys have been asking me to show you on camera the Beretta 1301 Tactical. But is it a viable self-defense semi-automatic shotgun? Or is it just Benelli's Paps Blue Ribbon drinking trailer park cousin? I happen to have one with me, so let's go take a look. Welcome back to OG's Danger Show. I think we've known each other long enough that you are aware I'm a fan of the Humble Shotgun. I use one at work. I've been slinging one around for quite a few years over on Tal Flater Mouse. And even the OG compound is protected by an old, reliable scattergun technologies Remington 870. A basic shotgun is a thing of beauty when it comes to defending one's home or property. Shotguns are, ironically, acceptable in many places where having a rifle might get you prison time. I have quite a few viewers in the UK and Australia and other parts of the world that are allowed to have a shotgun, and although the government doesn't really know it, most of these shotgun owners consider it their defense firearm in a place where just the term defense firearm would get you chained to a wall underneath the castle. There are a few things that have the psychological and physical impact of a shotgun. Although there are many myths out there that elevate the shotgun to a godlike status, and some myths that actually poo-poo the shotgun as a old-timey uh, relic, even the most basic scatter guns can serve you well in most situations you might encounter with either two-legged or four-legged predators. I'll put a link up here to my Dispelling Shotgun Myths video. If you haven't seen it yet, I think you'll find it pretty entertaining. So I was horrified recently to discover that I didn't own a semi-automatic shotgun. Imagine my embarrassment. Now, I've wanted a Benelli M4 for a dang long time, and I set out to find one for a reasonable price, but haha, <laughs> those of you who know Benelli's know that there's no such thing as a reasonably priced Benelli M4. The M4s I found were running anywhere from $1,900 to $2,200. Now, I could have sold a kidney or put myself out there on the street corner for quick cash. Nice! But I just didn't feel like the M4 was quite worth 2000 bucks since I wasn't really equipping myself for a trip to Kabul or anything like that. I just wanted a good semi-automatic home defense shotgun. And that Benelli M4 sure was appealing, but dang, 2000 bucks. I started looking around at viable alternatives and I stumbled across this Beretta 1301 Tactical. Now years ago, long before I had money to do such things, I bought a Beretta 1201 at a gun show from a guy who was going through a divorce and he needed to liquidate a pair of them. I don't remember what it cost me, but anything above about 17 bucks back then was out of my price range, and I recall being in trouble with the wife when I brought it home. The thing I liked about it was how light and maneuverable it was. Like so many of us, I sold that Beretta to get something better, although I'm not really sure what I bought was actually better. That old Beretta was the first and last time I owned an automatic shotgun. So when I stumbled across the Beretta 1301 Tactical, I immediately noticed the similarities to its older cousin, but this thing was far more advanced 
and had all the new features we expect on tactical shotguns these days. While I was poking around learning about it, I noticed that everyone who owned one loved it. I don't think I watched or even read one negative review. I set out to find one of these things and hoped they were affordable enough that I could justify its purchase over the Benelli. Now, I haven't owned a Benelli M4, but I've handled and shot a couple of them in my time, and I remember them as being heavy guns. Again, I'm not planning to pack my new shotgun through the mountainous region between Pakistan and Afghanistan. It's mostly going to be secured in a nearby closet for home defense duty. One common thread with all the reviews that I read was that the Breda 1301 owners found their guns to be super lightweight and very quick to maneuver and get on target. That's something I remember from 24 years ago and my Beretta 1201 experience. Beretta claims this shotgun was faster than any other automatic shotgun out there. A very specific 36% faster, in fact. I'm not sure how they measure such a thing, and shooting that fast probably isn't something I'll be doing anytime soon. Hell, I'm not even sure that I could shoot that fast and still remain on target. I'd probably be bouncing around, lighting off rounds in the sky like a drunken anti-aircraft gunner. I found a Beretta 13-1 on Gunbroker. Yes, Gunbroker, where you can also find a plain Jane Glock selling for $2,500. But this time I stumbled across the Beretta 13-1 advertised for $1,249. And it comes from a dealer in the East Bay area, just a couple hours north of where I'm located. Yes, the Beretta 13-1 tactical is fully California legal, and the shop in Alameda sent it right out to my dealer as soon as I'd sent them some of the YouTube millions that I've earned on this channel when you guys watch silly ads about Viking video games for your iPhones. The MSRP on the 1301 is $1,359, but like any MSRP, I was able to pick this one up for quite a bit less. When I first unboxed the 1301 at my local gun dealer, we noticed the OD green of the Cerakoted receiver was slightly different than the OD green plastic furniture. I feel like for the price, Beretta could probably match the paint color a little better since they make Cerakote in every color on the tactical rainbow. Either way, I don't usually care much about beauty in my long guns. Hell, I've even painted most of my rifles with rattle can spray paint, so a slight color variation wasn't going to stop me. While we're talking about guns of color, the 1301 comes in the same black as a Ferrari tire, comes in spaghetti tan or flat dark earth, and it comes in this OD green, which is my favorite as well as a two-tone marine finish, you know, with the typical silvery marine and black plastic furniture. They're all pretty cool looking, but I have lots of tan and black long guns, and the bling silver of the marine could give away my position when I'm LARPing in the backyard at 2 in the morning. Beretta ships the 1301 with a five-round magazine as standard, citing some compliance with federal law. I think it has something to do with the imported guns and meeting enough of the features to make them legal. These guns are made in Italy at the Beretta factory, not at their U.S. plant. Beretta will sell you their magazine extension, but some assembly is required and your parents help you put it together. The five-round magazine wasn't going to cut it for my tactical shotgun. I'd heard that the only magazine extension I should consider was the one made by Nordic Components. I'd heard these were nearly impossible to find, and when you did find them, they were sold at gouged prices way above what they should be. So I poked around a little online, and I ended up finding one for a regular price at Little Creek Trading in Arkansas. I've dealt with Ben over at Little Creek Trading before and I've always found them to be a great source for guns and gear and they have awesome customer service. Several days before my gun was even ready I had the Nordic Components kit and when I got the gun it took me all of about 15 minutes to install it on my new 1301. Yes it's black and the gun is green, I get it, but I still thought it looked pretty cool and hey they don't make the mag extension in green so chill out. Now the instructions that come with the Nordic Components magazine extension recommends not using Loctite to install their kit, but like most gunners I know better than the manufacturer and I lock it down tight with some red Loctite. After installing a sling and shooting the 13 one for the first time on a Tau Flater Mouse video, I realized I'd mounted the sling on the wrong side of the barrel, the little QD cup, the wrong side of the barrel. You know what happened next? I wrestled with a pair of pliers and an Allen wrench until I finally got the parts loose. Thank God the parts are well machined at tight tolerances right here in the U.S. There was no stripped out nuts or wrenches like when you try to use Chinese tools. You guys know what I'm talking about. The Nordic Components unit comes standard with a QD mount on one side and a small piece of heavy duty aluminum pick rail on the other side. You decide what side you want those things on, but mount them loose at first until you're damn sure you like the setup. The pick rail is obviously used to mount a white light since there aren't many aftermarket 
accessories for the 1301. I added a Vickers Tactical Sling from Blue Force Gear with a QD mount on one end since it was adjustable at two points, the only real requirements I have for a sling. The other end just loops through the standard tri-glide buckles since you really only need to break open a sling from one end in an emergency. Like getting stuck on the skids of a Blackhawk while you're fast roping onto the deck of a container ship to rescue the banana boat tanning lotion girls from Somali pirates. At least that's how it went in my dream. It's a great lightweight flat dark earth sling that looks nice against the OD shotgun. And while we're on the topic of nylon add-ons, I've used these elastic and nylon shot cards from STAC on my shotguns for the past 10 years, long before they were discovered by the cool guy gun crowd. You might have seen two of them on my Talflater shotgun, the Weatherby PA459. I can mount slugs on one side and buckshot on the other or any combo of 12 gauge ammo I choose. One thing about a shotgun is it's a low capacity gun, even with a two round Nordic Components magazine extension. Seven rounds of ammo on the gun will probably get you through most social situations, but shotguns need to be fed. One thing I've learned packing a shotgun around on duty for over 20 years, what you have on board your shotgun is what you're going to have on board your shotgun when you need your shotgun. You can't rely on bringing a bag of shells along or having a vest with shells mounted all over it like some damn tactical Christmas tree. And long ago, during a tactical shotgun course, I learned that shotgun shells stuck in the sling isn't the best idea since they are heavy, and they cause your gun to rock back and forth when you're trying to make a semi-accurate shot with, say, a slug. For these reasons, I like the S-TAC shot cards. I bought a simple Velcro kit from the fabric section at Walmart, and I used the adhesive-backed soft side of the Velcro and stuck it on the receiver of, the, of all my guns. No steel pins to drive through the receiver that might end up gouging out an aluminum receiver, and no bulky plastic or metal side saddle shell carriers. Although I don't hate these type of side saddles, I just think the S-TACs are better gear. I've heard warnings about leaving the uh, S-TAC elastic loops loaded and that it might stretch them out over time, but my oldest shot cards are close to 10 years old, and this magical elastic still holds the rounds tight. Unlike the elastic in your tidy whitey quitters, that you have to drag out of your trousers a few times a day. You rip these shot cards off and slap on another one. These things are my favorite method for storing extra ammo where it belongs, which is on board your shotgun. They're rather inexpensive too. I think the last time I checked, they were running about 12 to $15 because they make them in four, five, six, and seven round versions, and they offer them in FDE, OD green, black multicam and ranger green and then a some color called wolf whatever the hell that color is get yourself a few of those things and then send me a thank you note when you've mounted them and fallen in love with them because you will these things are pretty damn cool hey we're here to talk about the model and not her clothes starting up front on the Beretta tactical 1301 you might notice the front sight those of you who are familiar with the benelli m4 will probably recognize this front sight because it's the exact same sight that comes on the benelli m4 it's got a large white dot on a black post. Now Beretta says this white dot is photoluminescent. And uh, for those of you who don't speak Italian, that basically means that you can charge this glow-in-the-dark sight with a flashlight. You blast a little white light at it for a few minutes and the front dot is designed to glow in the dark for you for a short amount of time. I found that it took quite a bit of light and this thing wasn't all that bright anyway. Maybe I just didn't charge it long enough or maybe my flashlight didn't speak Italian. but. I'm not going to rely on that front sight to be a glow-in-the-dark front sight. I just use it as a white dot right, right now. And in fact, I've put an optic on this shotgun that we'll talk about in just a few minutes. The front sight is very easily changeable. So if you have a favorite uh, company, Trijicon or Ameriglow or XS Big Dot Sights, you can easily swap out this sight for one of your favorite company. The black post of the front sight is protected by these flared ears to keep them from bashing into things when you toss this in your safe or in your truck. The barrel is 18 and a half inches on the tactical model, and of course, this barrel was Cerakoted in OD green. But once again, I think it's just a slightly different OD green than the receiver. I could be wrong. I didn't notice a color difference when I took it out of the box, but after shooting it, and I mean shooting it a lot and very quickly, the barrel has heated up several times, and maybe it's just changed color a little bit. Again, I don't really geek out about such things. I'm a guy who actually likes beat up, scratched, and worn looking guns. It means that they're used a lot and they're loved. And the 1301 comes from the factory with a choke that is essentially an improved cylinder that sits flush with the bore of the shotgun. You can obviously swap out the supplied choke for another Beretta choke that fits your needs. 
The barrel itself is made of a three metal alloy that Beretta calls Steelium. Yeah, I know it's kind of a dumb name, but it's just a blend of nickel, chromium, and molybdenum. And Beretta claims it makes for a very durable and still lightweight barrel. Now, when I first took the shotgun out to the range on a uh, police training day, I had quite a few officers ask me if it was a short barrel shotgun. I don't know why, but this thing just kind of has the look of a short barrel shotgun. But underneath those hand guards, it's an 18 and a half inch barrel. It just has a look and a feel of a short barrel shotgun. It's very light. Overall, it's less than seven pounds. And with the Nordic Components magazine extension mounted on the front and a couple of these STAC shot cards, unloaded this shotgun weighed in at right about seven pounds, you can see here on the scale. One of the things I want to point out about this fore end, it's obviously OD green color to match the shotgun, but take a look at the grooves molded into the fore end. This is intentional and not only gives your fingers a slot for a consistent hold, it is actually designed to aid in sliding single shells into the open chamber when doing a combat reload. This is a feature that clearly shows the thought that went into making this a tactical shotgun instead of just shortening a bird or a competition gun. Underneath this forend is Beretta's famous blink gas piston system. They claim this new operating system is 36% faster cycling than the other semi-automatic shotguns. And I'm not sure how they got this number, and I'm not really sure I'll ever be able to shoot as fast as the gun can shoot, but it's nice to know that it's just a dang fast gun. I took it out with me on several occasions and tried both double aught buck and bird shot from this gun. Let's just say, this gun shoots as fast as I can pull the trigger. Any faster, and I'm not sure I could stay on target. After the first shot, I'd just be launching the next few rounds into the sky, and that's not a good plan, is it, Grandpa Joe? Buy a shotgun. Buy a double barrel shotgun. Let's go, Brandon. I'm not going to disassemble the action for you here on camera because YouTube gets kind of freaked out when they think we're modifying any guns. But an important thing to know is that Beretta claims the blink action doesn't need any solvents or lubricants under the handguard. They claim that it's self-cleaning and they emphasize that the blink action needs to be completely dry when reassembling. When Beretta claims their blink action is self-cleaning, I found out quickly that this doesn't mean the entire gun. You gun slackers will actually have to clean your shotgun in the chamber and the bolt area. And of course, you should always run a bore snake and some light solvent down the bore after heavy use. It took me several hundred rounds, but I eventually got the bolt area dirty enough that I had some minor stoppages. They were easily cleared, but it just goes to show you that you need to maintain your self-defense firearms. Now, all the controls on the right side of this shotgun are oversized for easy use with gloved fingers or cold hands or whatever you like. It has a standard trigger guard and a very light trigger, but the cross bolt safety has oversized buttons with a standard, you know, red for fire on the left side of the cross bolt. It also has an oversized bolt release. Now, you guys might have seen my video about setting a shotgun up for cruiser ready status, which is a safe way to store a loaded shotgun for home defense use or in your vehicle. This Beretta 1301 Tactical allows the use of cruiser ready status. You simply load the magazine as you would any time. Then you use this bolt release and fire one of the rounds out onto the lifter. That round sits there ready to go and then you could store this gun safely, unloaded with no round in the chamber, in your closet and should you get that bump in the night all you have to do is reach up and charge that bolt one time and you've now brought a round right into the chamber which then allows you to feed one extra round into the magazine so you're now essentially uploaded your gun by one extra round finishing out the action here you'll notice there's also an oversized bolt charging handle that has some kind of a plastic device over the top of it that makes it very easy to grip although it kind of looks like some tiny little sex toy on top of the receiver, the gun comes from the factory with a little piece of metal Picatinny rail that's perfect for mounting any kind of red dot optic you might like. And directly behind that, you'll notice this rear sight system that looks identical to the Benelli M4. However, this one's made out of plastic. Other than that, it is an adjustable rear ghost ring sight. And before I put on this Burris Fast Fire on the Picatinny rail, I used the ghost ring sight with the front sight post and found it to be a very fast and accurate system. Unable to leave well enough alone, I had to add a Burris Fast Fire 3. This was the best Burris red dot optic I could find at the time. I like this Burris Fast Fire 3, but I keep it just on the simple single dot setting. It's very easily adjustable for windage and elevation. And with the side-mounted slot screw, 
It mounts right on that Picatinny rail, and the standard factory starts are easily co-witnessed through the glass window of this Burris Fastfire 3. I like the simple red dot option. I'm not a fan of any kind of uh, strange reticles with circles and lines and all kinds of stadia in there. One thing I like about this Burris Fastfire is the ability to change out the battery from the top without taking the red dot off of the pick rail. All you need is a flat blade screwdriver or some type of small coin. Reach in there, take off the battery cover, drop in a new CR2025 battery, replace the cover, and you're good to go again. One thing I did find out about this red dot that is common sense anytime you are sighting in a red dot with a rifle, you need to sight in your red dot completely independent of the sights that come on this shotgun. I was out with Jeff from Tau Flater Mouse and like an idiot, I tried to dial over the red dot to match up with the front sight post. I found that the rounds I was shooting were about 12 to 14 inches high and right. When I independently sighted in the Burris Fast Fire and left the standard factory sights out of the picture, I was able to bring that dot back onto target and I was able to shoot slugs at quite a long distance very accurately. With the awesome sight system that comes from the factory on this breaded 1301 Tactical, you really don't even need a red dot sight, but since they got a piece of pick rail up there, of course most of us are going to go out there and buy a nice little red dot to put on top of this shotgun. Now moving to the rear, you'll notice this lightweight plastic OD green stock, the standard Monte Carlo style stock with aggressive checkering in all the right places. This lightweight stock has a 13 inch length of pull, which is a little shorter than your standard shotgun. This is another nod to the tacticalness that Beretta has built into this shotgun. On most of my social shotguns, I've replaced the standard stock with something shorter, either a Magpul stock or what we call a cadet stock that's a little bit shorter length of pull. I find this setup to be a lot easier to use, especially on a pump shotgun, and especially when wearing things like body armor or some kind of a plate carrier. In my experience, it's also easier for a tall person who has really long arms to use a shotgun with a short stock, whereas it's not very easy, in fact it's nearly impossible, for a short person with short little T-Rex arms to use a shotgun with a long length of pull. It basically makes them stretch themselves out and it positions your body awkwardly behind the shotgun and you're not able to absorb recoil very well. The Beretta 1301 Tactical comes with two additional soft rubber recoil pads that can be added to the back of this buttstock, but that of course would increase the length of pull and to be honest with you I just didn't need it. There is not a lot of recoil coming out of this semi-automatic shotgun due to that awesome gas piston system. So in addition to using this a few times on Tau Flater Mouse, I've taken it out to my own range and video shooting sessions four or five different times, and I've shot between four and five hundred rounds through this thing so far, getting it nice and dirty and testing the reliability of this action. The rounds I've shot out of this gun were mostly Federal Flight Control double aught buck, but I've also shot a bag full of birdshot out of this shotgun while making a video about using birdshot for home defense. Watch for that one coming up soon. Now it's been a long time since I've shot a Benelli M4, but the heavier gun, which is almost two pounds heavier than this Beretta 1301 Tactical, the heavier Benelli M4 has slightly less felt recoil. That being said, I didn't find the recoil on this Beretta 1301 to be in any way abusive. In fact, it's rather pleasant to shoot with just about every load out there, even the hard kicking Federal Flight Control. As I mentioned earlier, this thing shoots about as fast as I can pull the trigger, at least as fast as I can pull the trigger and still remain on target. I ran some bird shot between two steel challenge targets, and several times I stuffed this thing full of Federal Flight Control and fired it as fast as I could and was able to keep all the rounds on target pretty well. Beretta's Blink Gas Piston System absorbs most of the recoil in this shotgun, and it makes even these hard-kicking Federal Flight Control rounds rather easy to shoot. But standard 12-gauge double aught buck and birdshot is just a joy to shoot, and I found this gun very fun. It actually lures you into burning up way too much ammo on these range trips. This gun not only deceptively looks like a short barrel shotgun, it maneuvers and feels and shoots like a short barrel shotgun. When shouldered or when moving around corners in a building, it's very light and maneuverable. This would be a great home defense shotgun or a shotgun that you store in your vehicle. It's pretty clear why Beretta built this for police officers. This would be a great option for patrol cars where space is limited. 
So let's cover some of the druthers on this shotgun. First of all, for the price you pay, I think that they could probably match the strange light OD green of the receiver to the OD green of the barrel and plastic furniture. This is a tiny little thing, but it's attention to detail like this that makes an overall package worth the money. The machine work and the, and the build quality on this Beretta shotgun is, is unbelievable. Like any Italian shotgun, this thing just screams quality and attention to detail. It was kind of strange that the receiver was slightly off color from the rest of the shotgun. Now I'm not going to be a little bitch and complain about this too much because it honestly just doesn't matter. It's just one of those things that one notices. The only other thing I think I can complain about on this shotgun is I believe it should come from the box with a two-round magazine extension supplied by Beretta. They make their own, but this Nordic components that I had to outsource on my own ran me about an extra 150 bucks. I believe that this would be a perfect shotgun if it came with a system like this so that you didn't have to go out and find extra parts afterwards. This is a tactical and home defense shotgun after all and having two extra rounds on board for a total of seven rounds, or in some cases seven plus one rounds on board, seems to be kind of a prerequisite these days. And a five shot shotgun, uh, I just don't see the point of it. One of the things I noticed when pulling this out of the box was the location of a sling swivel stud on the buttstock of this shotgun, but there was no mechanism for attaching a sling to the front of the shotgun. It has no sling swivel stud as it comes from the factory and pretty much you have to rely on adding an aftermarket magazine extension like this Nordic Components that has a QD system or another attachment method to get your sling attached to the front of the shotgun. Again, this is easily fixed with some aftermarket parts, but for the price, maybe it should be included. Pretty much the only other thing I can say about this shotgun that I would change in a perfect world, I would replace the plastic rear sight with a metal version like the one that comes on the Benelli M4. However, for lightweight and cost savings, I totally understand why this heavy duty plastic sight is mounted on the Breda 1301 Tactical. It does not feel like a lightweight plastic sight. It's uh, very durable and the ghost ring is well protected, so I don't feel like it's a bad piece of equipment. but. If I was to build this shotgun from the ground up, I'd probably include a heavy-duty aluminum version, like on its overpriced cousin. So overall, I found this shotgun a joy to shoot. The price might be a little bit high for an automatic shotgun, but I feel that for what you get here, it's well worth the price for this Beretta 1301 Tactical. Not so with the Benelli M4. So I'm very happy with my purchase of the Beretta 1301 Tactical. Once it was clean, and I've now proven its reliability, it now sits in the closet of the master bedroom of the OG compound, and I fully trust it to defend my family from zombies and killer clowns and biker gangs and whatever else may come along. So if you're looking for a semi-automatic shotgun and you don't mind paying a little over a thousand dollars, I think you're going to really like this Beretta option. It's a great option to the two thousand dollar Benelli M4. In fact, in a lot of ways, I think it's a better shotgun. You might be able to find cheaper semi-automatic shotguns out there, but I don't believe you're going to find one as comfortable and easy to shoot as this Beretta. So I appreciate you guys sticking with me th through this review of the Beretta 1301 Tactical. It's a review that a lot of you have been asking for for a couple of months since this thing first made its appearance on Tau Flader Mouse. If you like this review and reviews like it, give the video a thumbs up down below and share a copy of it over to 10,000 of your closest friends. If you didn't like it, keep your mouth shut. Who asked you? I also want to give a special shout out to all my Patreon donors out there. If you would like to help out OG's Danger Show, you can find a link to our Patreon page in the description below this video and every video on this channel. Thank you guys for your support. Thanks for stopping by and watching this video. You guys stay armed where you are legally allowed to do so. OG out.